This video is going to introduce the idea of motion in two dimensions, and there's actually a number of things that corresponds to this first section of Chapter 4 of Night that this sequence of videos will go through. First, we're going to talk about what I call trajectory plots, but are plots of x versus y, and there's a lot to talk about there. And part of what that will take us into is analyzing acceleration in two dimensions. And there are a few really important ideas here. And finally, we'll look at what the kinematics equations are in two dimensions. But hopefully, if you understand vectors fairly well, uh, this is going to be something very straightforward. There are two major learning outcomes that this relates to. First is representation, that a lot of what we're talking about with acceleration and trajectories is again going to be graphical. Now we will be working with it quantitatively, but it's important to understand what's happening in a visual sense, since when you begin your work by actually drawing pictures, you'll want to somewhat sketch some of these things out. The second aspect is problem solving, that again, this does lead us to some quantitative work, especially as we first meet these kinematics equations in two dimensions, and understanding that we need to work with our two components separately is a really important aspect of doing any sort of uh, work in two dimensions. So the first thing I want to start with here is talking a little bit about what I call trajectories, but are basically plots of x versus y. So in this case, we're looking at the motion of an object we're again just going to think of it as a dot. This is our simplification. We're simplifying down to our particle model. And this particle is traveling through two dimensions, x and y. Now something to keep in mind is that this y direction is not necessarily up and down, meaning that gravity is working on this. This could be, for instance, the motion of uh, perhaps a rock on an icy pond or a little electric car driving on the road. So x and y can be a top-down view where gravity is not a factor, so please keep that in mind. And so what this plot is just showing us is that we have our origin and we have our position in a given moment in time. So this is our position vector. And if we wanted to talk about our position at some later point in time and we drew this vector, this is then our displacement vector, delta r. So we've already met these ideas, the idea of the position vector and the displacement vector, but now we're doing it in two dimensions. So there's going to be an x component to our position vector and a y component to our position vector. Similarly, our displacement vector can have x and y components. Obviously, we could make this whole thing much more complicated and make it a bird flying through the air or a bug flying in a room where you would have x, y, and a third component z, but we're usually not going to do that because it doesn't actually make the physics much better, it simply makes it a lot harder. So the other thing to think about is not just that your position in a given moment in time is still from the origin, and displacement will be uh, between two dots, but what's happening with velocity. So this is really important. At one given position, our velocity vector is tangent to the curve. And we would find its x component and its y component by doing trigonometry. And typically, we're going to use this angle, which is the angle that the velocity vector makes with respect to our positive x coordinate. So this is important, and we're going to come back uh, very soon to the difference between finding velocity this way and when we've talked about velocity before, but every single point on our trajectory has a velocity at that point whose direction is given by the tangent line. What that tells you is in a situation like this, your velocity vector is actually changing direction. So initially, at a point down here, and I'm not very good at tangent lines, it was something like that. So you can see that it's pointed a little more in the y direction than this vector is. If we chose this point, it looks like our velocity vector is actually exactly in the x direction. Our velocity vector here actually has a, well, I haven't done a great job drawing it, 
a negative y component. So please keep in mind that whenever you see a, a line that's curved now in xy space, that means that the direction of your velocity vector is changing. So now in chapter one, when we were talking about motion diagrams, we did look at some motion that was two-dimensional. And so now that we're back and really working with two dimensions in detail now, I want to draw some distinctions between what information you get from a motion diagram and what information you get from an XY plot or a trajectory. And you can actually overlay them over uh, top of one another, and there's some information in that. So in this case, the two trajectories are identical, but the motion diagrams, these individual points laid over top of it are clearly different. And what's important to realize is if I have the trajectory alone, I don't have any time information. I have two coordinates, which are both position, neither is time. So if I just show you a trajectory, you don't actually know how the particle was moving through that trajectory in time. So by putting this motion diagram on top of it, remember that every point on a motion diagram represents the same change in time. So when I look at this, it looks like my particle is traveling at a fairly constant speed, because if we think of just the distance between these two points, it's about the same. Not exactly, but I'm not very good at making figures. So we see that in this case, our particle is following this path at fairly constant speed. Now, the same trajectory, if I lay my, my points out for my motion diagram differently, and again, even though they're not equally spaced, we would assume that the difference in time is the same. We would actually see that it's moving slowly here, because in each time window it doesn't move very far, but then it speeds up, it goes faster through this region, because it can travel a further distance in the same time, and then it slows down again. So if you just have the trajectory plot, you don't know what's actually happening in time. So that's one reason that you might want to put a motion diagram over top of a trajectory plot and why the book will sometimes show it that way. So that's just one thing to know. Now in both cases, at every single point, the direction of your velocity vector is going to be the same. It's given by the uh, the slope of this, the tangent line. However, note that here it would be going faster. You would have a larger magnitude of your velocity vector in the figure on the right than you would on the left. So even though we can figure out the direction of our velocity from a trajectory, we don't actually know its magnitude. So the last thing that I want to do is come back to this idea that we have been doing plots already, we have been doing position versus time graphs, and now we're doing trajectories. And remember that our position versus time graph, we frequently use this S to represent a coordinate. It could be X or it could be Y or really whatever we want. And now when we're talking about trajectories, we're typically saying X versus Y to show that they're two separate directions. Um, so now here, when we had a position versus time plot, we also got velocity from this. But in this case, this was a one-dimensional velocity. So what we actually got was the value, the magnitude. So in this left case, we were learning about the magnitude of our velocity, and then up versus down, if our, if our slope was up, that would be a positive, down would be negative. But the slope itself was giving us the magnitude, because this was a one-dimensional situation. Now we have a two-dimensional situation. We get the direction, but the actual magnitude, we don't have enough information to figure that out from this plot. So please keep that in mind. I, this is a mistake that people sometimes make, that they try to treat these two plots as equivalent. They're very, very different. They show you completely different information. And that's one reason why you want to be careful when you make a plot and always label your axes. Because even if you just draw the same curve, if it's an x versus y plot versus a, a position and time plot, that gives you very different information. So please label your axes and keep in mind that the information we get from these is very different even though in both cases we're talking about the tangent line at a point.